In the early dawn light, the artisans and craftsmen of Bath Ironworks prepared another lifeless hull for launch. Although destined to become one of the mightiest warships to sail the seas, she remained cold steel until the blood and sweat of her crew blew the warm breath of life into her. At her launching, she was committed for the first time to the maritime world for which she was intended. Those fortunate enough to witness such an event do not soon forget it. Congresswoman Liz Patterson attended the launching and later recalled her feelings in remarks made at the commissioning ceremony. To see the great hawk slide gently into those very cold waters, surrounded by the colors of red, white, and blue balloons, the sounds of anchors away, and the cheers and applause of those in attendance. It's an experience that I will never forget, nor my family will ever forget. Since her launching, Kalpins has been completed and tested, and her crew has been trained and inspected, setting a number of records for excellence in the process. The tone of a ship is set by its first crew. You are the ones who bring her to life, give her a heart, and make her an extension of your own unique abilities. You have already distinguished yourselves as the best pre-com unit assembled at Bath Ironworks. Your accomplishments include having been the most complete ship at delivery, with the best demonstrated missile firings and acceptance trials ever seen. The mayor of Kalpin spent four days aboard the ship at sea and witnessed firsthand her crew at work. But as great as this ship is, and it certainly is with its technology and its firepower, the things that impressed me most were the quality, the character, and the dedication of the men who serve on it. It was inspiring to watch them, ladies and gentlemen. Their pride in their ship, their enthusiasm in their work, and their patriotism in their nation. Despite the concentration and effort required of a crew to prepare a ship for commissioning, the crew found time to participate in the 1990 Mighty Moo Festival in June. Mighty Moo is the name the crew of the original Calpins gave to its ship, and the festival is held each year in the town of Calpins to honor the Second World War veterans who served on her. Crew members of the new Calpins, who call themselves the Herd, also enjoyed participating in the festivities. All the guys that were from the original cow pens have been just really great. We had uh, a picnic last night, and they all sat us down and had dinner with us, you know, and we swapped some sea stories, and, you know, we were able to tell them what things are going to be like on our ship and compare notes as to how they were back in World War II. You know, it was just a lot of fun. As part of the festival, the prospective commanding officer of the new cow pens, Captain Ed Moore, gave a model of his ship to Calpin's National Battlefield Park. Captain Moore, it is with pride and honor that I accept this model on behalf of the National Park Service and particularly the Calpin's National Battlefield. It was here on a bitter January morning in 1781 that General Daniel Morgan wrought a brilliant and surprising victory over Colonel Bannister Tarleton's larger and more experienced army. Colonel Morgan told his troops, they're going to line up for breast now. We're going to go out. Then I'll give you the sign. We're going to drop back in the sun in the shape of a horseshoe. We're going to suck these British in. We're going to envelop them, and we're going to beat them. That's exactly what they did. And Colonel Tarleton barely got away with his life. His story and safe had not been the cow pens. They were not better all town. This defeat forced General Cornwallis, the British commander, to 
to make a series of strategic decisions which led directly to his surrender at Yorktown nine months later. The name Cal Penn celebrates an American victory at the birth of our nation. The determination and the commitment we see in the faces of the officers and the crew members of Cal Penn's shows that they are ready to accept this heritage and their mission. I congratulate Captain Moore and the fine crew, and I welcome you to the Atlantic Command. On March 1, 1991, Calpins arrived in Charleston and began a frenetic final week of preparations for the commissioning ceremony. Charleston, North Charleston, and South Carolina were gracious hosts of this event. There's no question that this ship will uphold the traditions established in Calpins, South Carolina more than 200 years ago. And we are deeply honored that the name of Calpins has been chosen once again to represent the peace and freedom that we love so much. We're so proud that this event is in our community. For it, in many respects, after 210 years, reunites two communities that played such an important role in the founding and the shaping of our country. By March 9th, Calpins and her crew were ready. Thousands of friends, crew families, veterans of the mighty move, neighbors of the battlefield, Charlestonians, and other South Carolinians all joined the crew and honored guests at the Charleston Naval Base for the commissioning ceremony. The ceremony you will witness today is a time-honored tradition which started with the commissioning of the U.S. Navy's first ship, the captured British schooner Margarita, in 1775. Since that date, thousands of ships have undergone the magical transition from the silent and unmanned vessel, which you now see before you, to a warship fully manned, completely alive, and ready to carry out the call for freedom anywhere in the world. Calvin's was commissioned less than two weeks after the end of Operation Desert Storm. The vice chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Admiral David E. Jeremiah, was principal speaker at the ceremony. Our soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines are well-trained, they're well-led, well-disciplined, and highly motivated. And it didn't take a military expert to see that on their faces every night on television. They're tough human professionals, and they fought well at sea, in the air, and on the land. And that victory could not have been more overwhelming. And the people who did it were not the active duty forces, but also our reserve components. I think it's appropriate that this fine ship, the USS Calvins, is named for a Revolutionary War battle in which the outnumbered American force was almost evenly divided between Continental Army troops and local militia. In that battle, regulars and citizen soldiers stood shoulder to shoulder against the enemy. As authorized by the Secretary of the Navy and for the President of the United States, I hereby place the United States ship Calpins in commission, God bless and God speed all who sail in her. I will read my orders. Bureau of Naval Personnel Orders 1980, dated 17 July 1990, from Chief of Naval Personnel to Captain Edward Moore, Jr., United States Navy. When directed by reporting senior, detach and report to pre-commissioning unit Calpins. Upon commissioning and assuming command of USS Calpins, report to immediate superior in command for duty as commanding officer. Admiral Ryman, I proudly accept command of USS Calpins. Commander Wallstrom, set the first watch. Aye, aye, sir. The long glass is a traditional symbol of the authority vested in the officer of the deck. It is passed from officer to officer as the responsibility of the watch is passed. Mr. Harold Dahl, representing the veterans of USS Calpens, CVL 25, who have maintained this watch for 44 years, will be relieved today by Lieutenant Chuck Ellsworth. Ready to relieve you, 
sir. I am ready to be relieved. The ship is in a cold, iron status and requires to be manned. <laughs> I relieve you, sir. CVL 25 veterans stand relieved. We wish you fair winds and following seas. Sir, the watch is set. Very well. Captain, the watch is set, sir. Very well. Price the colors and break the commissioning pennant. Aye, aye, sir. Officer of the deck, hoist the colors and break the commissioning pennant. Captain, the colors have been hoisted and the commissioning pennant broken, sir. Very well, call the crew to quarters. Aye, aye, sir. Bandmaster, sound off. Calpens crewmen, man your warship. The ship is manned. The crew is at the rail. Request permission to bring our ship to life. Very well, Commander Wallstrom. Bring Calpins to life. Aye, aye, sir. After bringing Calpins to life, Captain Moore authorized three cheers for the commissioning committee and the cities of Charleston and North Charleston for hosting the commissioning. Hip, hip. Hooray! Hip, hip. Hooray! Hip, hip. Hooray! Admiral Olson, USS Calpins is manned and ready and reports for duty to Commander Naval Surface Force, United States Pacific Fleet. Captain Moore then ordered the governor's flag broken and honors rendered. Any captain worth his salt looks into the faces of his men each day to gauge their temperament, ascertain their well-being, and assess their ability to withstand adversity. In good times, everyone is happy, everyone gets along, and the goals and mission of the ship seem clear and immutable. The true character of a crew and the warship they serve in, however, is never more evident than during periods of intense stress, when deadlines must be met and precise execution of the operational schedule is necessary. Only combat is more stressful than breathing life into an entity where none existed before. You have met your initial trial by fire with uncommon good grace, confidence in your own ability, a smile on your faces, and a twinkle in your eyes. We haven't done everything right, but we have always given it our best shot, and in my estimation, you have succeeded beyond measure. Saddam gave up because he heard the herd was on its way. 
because the XO is fond of saying, keep stroking.